What is up, everybody? It is your boy Fry. Thank you once again for tuning into another video, man. Shout out notification squad. Hope you're doing well. Make sure to smash that like button as well as to subscribe if you're new to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be handling some amazing stock FL Studio mastering techniques. I'm going to be guiding you through, you know, just some basic ways um, on how you can kind of finalize your track, get that extra loudness without destroying the mix. I'll also talk about some ways that you can avoid, you know, kind of overdoing it as well as, you know, how to fix it in the mix before you actually do mastering it. It gets quite complicated when you are handling everything in one project, but if you can get good at it and you can kind of learn to refrain from overdoing things, you're going to end up with good results. So yeah, man, let's get straight into it, man. This is from my pop punk vocal effect. This was the MGK um, vocal effect we did a while back, and this is the vocal edition. So for those who are always interested in getting an FLP that actually has vocals in it, you can check this out in the description box. But yeah, man, I've just been playing around with it. I wanted to show you guys and girls something cool today. So I'm going to play the track quickly. And while I'm playing the track, I'll kind of turn the mastering chain on and off. And then well, let's actually start with it off and then I'll turn it on. Yeah, I've been up all week. I just can't sleep. You've been suffocating me. I can't breathe. So pretty cool, nice mix. As you can see, we are kind of sticking to the rule of thumb of minus 6 dB is going to give us enough room to do our thing. So let's turn on our mastering. Yeah, I've been up all week, I just can't sleep You've been suffocating me, I can't breathe I'm Stuck in place and I just can't leave Words in my head, but I just can't speak In my head, in my head I think I'm drowning, what the fuck? In my head, in my head I'm way too gone, you can't save me Yeah, all this time we've been wasting Wasting, sipping champagne All right, there you go. You get an idea of what's going on. We got some decent alley FS going. Um, you know, we're kind of aiming for like between, I would say comfortably minus 8.5 and then minus 9.7 is probably going to give you a nice result if you are looking to upload to streaming and that kind of thing. Um, simply because, you know, you're not crushing your track too much. I have crushed the track a little bit to kind of get that loudness, but overall, I'm not damaging it too much. So yeah, man, let's get straight into it, man. So first things first, you know, let's break down the chain and then I will, as I said, break down two extra saucy techniques to actually get a bit of analog girth going on in your track. So first things first, man, I know a lot of people look down upon the sound goodizer, but the sound goodizer is actually a really quick and easy way um, to actually get some added, um, kind of to fill up the holes of the mix, you know, you don't want to really be pulling up EQs and dealing with every little frequency. You also want to find plugins that can kind of bring up the overall level of your mix and the Sound Good Eyes is an excellent way to do that. The cool thing about the Sound Good Eyes is that it has these four flavors. Sound Good Eyes is actually a singular plugin version of something that is included in the Maximus plugin. Let me just pull up the Maximus and I think they actually are presets um there you go right there so if we we're using d this is really what's happening something is happening here i haven't really ever cared to learn uh, what this is actually doing but um it is doing a bit of compression and uh, if you overdo it it sounds really bad so i just accidentally deleted the plugin so that kind of sucks um so let's just kind of get it back we might as well just remaster it right yeah, I've been up all week, I just can't sleep You've been suffocating me, I can't breathe I'm stuck in place and I just can't leave Words in my head, but I just Pretty happy with that, right? Yeah, I've been up all week, I just Sounds good to me. But nonetheless, man, you know, as you can see right there, it's just going to add a little bit of volume. That's all you really want. I start my mastering chains off with adding a little bit of volume. I'm either doing this on the analog mix bus, but when I'm, I'm, I'm doing digital stuff, I don't really want to add heaps and heaps of plugins. I feel that it does start to kind of uh, deteriorate the sound. So you want to find one plugin always that's going to add that kind of analog front end to your mix. So you kind of get a bit more going on, but you don't want to overdo it, obviously, because again, you're battling between adding value to your track and obviously not trying to destroy the mix as well. So Sound Good Eyes is an excellent start. If you want to get obviously more in depth, you can use the uh, Maximus and uh, you'll have a bit more control. But for the sake of simplicity, this is awesome. So yeah, I mean, that's the first thing. After that, obviously we are going to get into EQ. EQ is probably 
you know, um, these days, man, mixing analog, I'm not really doing too much mix bus EQ. I might do like a dB boost. As you can see, I'm sticking to the same rules. I'm really doing really light bumps in the low end. Um, maybe like a little bit of a dip, really just dealing with the vocals and like how the vocals are perceived on top of the beat. So really, I just wanted to add a little bit of air. And on top of that, the this beat is actually kind of mastered. So you really want to watch out that you're not overdoing it. You know what I mean? Both of those plugins right there aren't really doing too much to affect the overall sonic character of the beat. So it's really just dealing with the vocal and kind of blending things in to make it sound full and, um, you know, balanced. So as you can see, little dips and boosts, um, you know, you really want to be dipping away parts of the mix that might be a bit too full overall. So obviously, if you feel that the vocal is, is too loud, just turn on the, 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 the vocal, right? You don't need to go too crazy. So as you can see, just half a dB, maybe even let's just look at what value we have right here. As you can see right there, 1 dB boost in the high end. And I'll also uh, predict that we're doing just about a dB lift in the top end. And that's really just going to help open up the track. Simple and sweet, right? Um, so after that, man, we also had another EQ. I must have added this post. Um, but again, just kind of boosting again. I don't know why. Um, I'm boosting and cutting, you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever sounds good at the end of the mix. You know, we're just doing a bit of this and that. You'd probably want to try and not use two EQs. I don't know why I use two EQs. Sometimes it just sounds good. But for the most part, one EQ is going to do the job. Um, when I'm doing analog mastering, I'm using a, you know, the SSL EQ just to do a low and high boost. So that I must be trying to replicate that because I'm kind of used to getting that low end and high end boost going. Uh, definitely sounds good when you mix your track in a way to where when you boost the treble of your overall mix, it's not really boosting one or the other too much if you get what i'm saying you know you've got a good mix when you boost the treble and both the beat and the vocal kind of rise in treble or bass kind of equally that's how you know or oh, that's how i know so yeah man pretty simple and sweet right after that obviously we need our master track uh limiter so you know obviously i'm keeping it simple i don't want to use maximus or anything like that because we are going to get compression um i think maximus does have a limiter section but i'm pretty sure it's just the limiter section of this uh fruity limiter so the cool thing about fruity limiter is that you actually have um we're just going to focus on the limiter not the compressor okay we'll talk about bus compression in a different video but the limiter really all i'm ever, ever focusing on is a setting the output ceiling so we're not clipping too much right we don't want to clip the master bus um or the mix bus master channel whatever it's all the same thing really um and then we also have the saturation section right here, which is going to give us some soft saturation. So we'll actually go in depth a bit more just now, as I said, uh, in terms of soft saturation. But as you can see, I'm really just lifting the overall gain of the track just to the point where I feel the mix is loud enough, but not being crushed. So as you can see, if you pay attention to this meter, I'm only really crushing certain parts of the track um, that, the, you know, where the vocal kind of pop out. And we could also compress that, but because of the sake of this beat and how compressed the beat was, I didn't really want to do any mix bus compression. So you can kind of see where I'm going, but for the sake of this, let's compress a little bit. You've been suffocating me, I can't breathe. Stuck in place and I just can't leave. Words in my head, but I just can't speak. In my head, in my head. I think I'm drowning, what the fuck? In my head, in my head I'm way too gone, you can't save me Yeah, all this time we've been wasting Wasting, sipping champagne, I'll be wasted Fell asleep in the stars, ooh, now I'm jaded Looking at my watch and I'm running out of time Like I can't keep on living like this No, she can't keep that doesn't sound too bad. We're doing a little bit of compression. But as you can see, I would really just be compressing the peaks that are popping out of the track. I would generally compress over here. So I would do analog enhancement here, mix bus compression second to that. Um, and then I'd get some nice results. But yeah, man. So let's kind of go into our secret source technique. So the first one would be um, to make use of the Fruity Wave Shaper. Fruity Wave Shaper is an uh, you know, incredibly underrated plugin. And I do not know much about it, but I can see that you can really just distort stuff with it using wavetable guides. Um, I do not know much about them, but it's pretty much the same as a Fruity Soft Clipper. It'll compress a mix. Um, you can distort your mix. Um, I'll kind of just show you right there. Ooh. I'll turn that down in post. You can do all sorts of crazy things with this. So watch out with this. Obviously, you don't want to be cranking your speakers. My speakers are not that loud, so I'm lucky right there. Um, but yeah, man, basically the trick, man, which I learned a while ago is to really create a kind of weird tape sound. And what, how I achieve that is by doing this, right? So you open up the plugin as is, and then we're going to be lifting up um, this curve and kind of making it bend more than it is straight. Because I think straight, nothing is happening. 
You've been suffocating me, I can't breathe Stuck in place and I just can't leave Words in my head, but I just can't speak so that sounds a lot louder. It's obviously crushing our whole mix chain. So we want to tone it back. The cool thing about this plugin is it does have a mix knob. So what we're going to do is we're just going to tone it back up until the point where we have a little bit of extra girth and, and loudness added to our track, but we're not overdoing it. You've been suffocating me, I can't breathe. Stuck in place and I just can't leave. Words in my head, but I just can't speak. In my head, in my head, I think I'm drowning. What the fuck? In my head. Very subtle, very tapey, very nice. It's kind of rounding off the edges of the track. What you could do then is take it to the next level. The cool thing about this plugin is it is fully customizable. So one technique I, I try doing sometimes is to do this weird kind of curve at the beginning. You've been suffocating me, I can't breathe. Stuck in place and I just can't leave. Words in my head, but I just can't speak. In my head, in my head. I think I'm drowning, what the fuck? In my head. You know, there are all sorts of crazy things you could do. I'm sure this has some sort of ramifications to it. You've been suffocating me, I can't breathe. But you cannot go wrong with just adding this nice kind of, um, you know, kind of curve on there. I really don't know what any of this is doing. I've never studied uh, wavetables, but, uh, you know, I, I understand the basics of a compression curve. So, for example, compression curve would look like, uh, no, that's a hard clip, I guess. But you get the idea, man. Have some fun and definitely mess around with the different ways to... Um, you know, distort your track in a way. You could also completely munch your track. So, so let's just find something that would be crushing our song or adding absolute distortion to our track. So something like that, maybe not. Something like that definitely sounds quite analog. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring it in like two, three percent, right? You've been suffocating me, I can't breathe. Stuck in place and I just can't leave. Words in my head, but I just can't speak. In my head, in my head, I think I'm drowning. What the fuck? In my head, in my head, I'm way too gone. You can't save me. Can you see how that little bit of, of, of us introducing or that little introduction of distortion has kind of filled out our mix? As I said, it's, it's filled up the empty spaces in our mix without, without us having to really EQ in those regions. So really cool, lots of fun. I actually quite like how that sounds. So we'll leave that there for the sake of this video. And we've also gained a nice uh, kind of dB of LUF or one LUFS um, level. Or You've been suffocating me, I can't breathe Stuck in place and I just can't leave Words in my head, but I just can't speak In my head, in my head Lots of fun, maybe turn it down a little bit You've been suffocating me, I can't breathe Stuck in place and I just Pretty aggressive, but yeah man, you get the idea After that man, what we could then do Hmm, we're also getting a little bit of noise there, so you just need to watch out what you're doing. Um, after that, man, here's another secret technique, which would be making use of a mid-side EQ, okay? So if you're mixing your whole track um, and you don't want the beat to be involved in this process, um, you could actually just, you know, this is why I always have the pre-master track. A lot of people ask, why do you have this pre-master track? Well, it enables you to detach certain elements from your mix, process the other elements, and then leave whatever you don't want processed to be unpassed, right? So for example, I could have everything going into this pre-master, Right? Or if I didn't want the beat, only wanted the vocals and the pre-master as well as the SFX because I wanted to process everything together, I could then just say, you know what, beat just goes straight to the master channel. Right, there you go. Now we, we, we don't have the beat part of this processing chain. So what you could do with the mid-side EQ is actually just boost the side channel. This is something that I actually do sometimes with, with master tracks uh, when mastering tracks. And what it'll do is a side channel, I need you to go and watch a whole video on this. Um, we're kind of nearing the end of this tutorial and I am. I'm not really gonna go through the whole process of talking about mid-side EQ, but basically to sum it up, when you use a mid-side EQ, you can actually split your song into two halves or into two different parts. And one part will be the mono element, right? So if I turn off the side channel, You've been suffocating me, I can't breathe. Now we just have a mono signal. And if I was to introduce the stereo segment or the side channel, we would then have all the reverbs and all of the differences or some difference could be mono and um, stereo. You've been suffer so you can see how the side channel vanishes when uh, we mono out our track.
go and watch a full video on mid-side EQ. But point being, man, is that you can customize or alter your side channel to get a bit more kind of warmth out of your track. So one thing I found with this track was, hey man, I could add a bit more kind of low end boost. This is a trick which you can make use of with the SSL. Um, it has the space knob and it does something similar where you're actually boosting the side channels mid range and it really warms up your track. It really opens up the track. So I've left this frequency point around 700 and I'm gonna boost it and then I want you to hear if you can um, kind of make out what's happening. You've been suffocating me, I can't breathe Stuck in place and I just can't leave Words in my head, but I just can't speak In my head, in my head I think I'm drowning, what the fuck In my head, in my head I'm way too gone, you can't save me Yeah, all this time we've been wasting Wasting, sipping champagne, I'll be wasted Fell asleep in the stars, ooh, now I'm jaded I'm a watch and I'm running out of time Like I can't keep on living like this No, she can't keep on living like this We can't keep on living like this Shouldn't let your heart and I just might miss so as you can hear, it's very subtle, but it does definitely add a bit of kind of weight to our vocal sound. And obviously, if you wanted to affect the beat as well, you could do that and then just add this onto the master channel. So those are my extra two tips. Hopefully you learned something about finalizing your track in FL Studio. Um, this is by no means going to be the perfect mastering tutorial. Uh, I can one day do a track where I kind of show you my processing chain. Um, I have two mix bus comp or a mix bus compressor running into a fusion and that gives me quite a nice sound and then on the master channel I'll really only do limiting because I have already done exactly what I've just shown you. So that's how I'm mastering my tracks these days. Hopefully you learned something in this video. If you made it this far, shout out to you because it seems that you're willing to learn more about mixing man. So I salute you for that. Definitely check out the FLP in the description box if you want this. Some of these presets won't obviously be there because this is me just adding stuff on. But definitely try out and add these techniques. Um, but yeah man. Uh, definitely smash like. I'll check you out next time. Peace out.